for the time being. That is all. Okay, let's go see the movie. When we look back at these data a few months from now, these markets anticipate that we will say something along the lines of, wow, I can't believe I didn't save enough or I can't believe people are panicking. When we zoom out, the picture becomes perfectly obvious. Everyone here is going to be awarded a significant prize. And in today's episode, I will discuss the distinction between utility and speculation, as well as the fact that the markets have not witnessed a utility asset achieve a significant amount of success. That is a fact, by the way, regarding this particular episode, I will simply be discussing the facts. On no account am I trying to flaunt my ego here. This is the reality. Following that, we will discuss the XRP rich list as well as the individuals that genuinely possess XRP. What is the total number of us and how much do we have available to us? First, let me discuss the difference between utility and supposition. It was made very obvious by Marcus and Fanger that the current state of the markets is characterized by speculation. At this very moment, in the year 2024, everything is merely a conjecture. This type of business does not have access to any assets that are currently functional and may be utilized. Banks purchasing Bitcoin in their exchange-traded funds, ETFs, does not alleviate any problems. The fact that you need to exercise patience is also made very plain by what Marcus says in this passage. People are putting in place an entirely new system, as you are all aware. It is essential to keep in mind that he made this statement not just when he was in charge of institutional markets, but also while he was the head of institutional markets around the world. I'll play another video of Ripple employees discussing the difference between speculative and utility investments after you finish listening to what he has to say. Yes, it is essential. It is vital that you comprehend this specific matter. The majority of the cryptocurrency's liquidity at the moment is being used for speculation, which is driven by things like incentives, and I believe that everyone would agree with this statement. To further elaborate, I believe that it provides the company with the ability to generate new ideas in a significant way. On the other hand, I am of the opinion that the concept of practical application will become increasingly significant as cryptocurrency matures and realizes its full potential. As an illustration, Ripple's primary product on demand liquidity makes use of XRP liquidity worth billions of dollars to make it possible for payments to be transmitted from the United States to Mexico in a matter of seconds, as opposed to the two or three days that are required by traditional systems. As a result, we are able to eliminate a significant issue that plagues the entire planet, which is financial transactions. It is also possible for this kind of application to occur on a trillion fold scale. Instead of being utilized for gaming, I believe that in the future, cryptocurrency liquidity will be put to use to solve problems that occur in the real world. Miguel Vise will be the topic of discussion for the moderator before I proceed to show you the following film. At Ripple, Miguel Vise held the position of head of XRP markets as his official title. Over the course of three years and six months, he remained there. In addition, do you remember how I often say that when leaders leave Ripple, they go to work for a startup or another company that leverages the XRP ledger? And it turns out that we were absolutely correct about this. In the present moment, he is serving as the chief cash officer of Forte, which guess what? This does make use of the XRP system. He turns his head to gaze at the cash officer. XRP ledger can be seen on this page of the website. To be more specific, we do have a position available for Forte right here in San Francisco. After listening to what Miguel Vise has to say, which is essentially a summary of what the interviewer has to say, you should next listen to what the Ripple employee has to say. Once again, it is always about what is the most favourable. No, we have not yet witnessed that. That they are required to have a price, as well as the fact that they can be utilised for that purpose. Mostly due to the fact that I had a conversation with Miguel Vise, who is in charge of XRP markets at Ripple a few months ago. The cryptocurrency that we have been discussing is called XRP and it is issued by Ripple. It was before he could really talk to banks about persuading them to use this as a vehicle for on-demand finance that he made that statement. The worth on the market ought to be significantly higher. There has to be a significant increase in the number of transactions. Additionally, they needed to engage in commerce with a greater number of individuals. If it is solely being used for transportation, what does this imply for the price in comparison to other uses, such as retail or speculative usage that costs are going to go up, to tell you the truth, I have no notion what it is that I believe makes Bitcoin or Ethereum valuable. As far as I can tell, the first people to use Bitcoin were all average people. This is something that I believe to be true. There was no success with that either. And for no apparent reason, millions of people are now holding it. They are going to keep it a secret. At this point, the only function that Bitcoin serves is to store value. I do not believe that will change in any way. In addition, they discovered that in some way, and there is a possibility that this will continue to be the case in the years to come. On the other hand, for XRP, it is all about this one demand driver that is quite significant. Right, I get what you're saying. 
Before XRP to be completely integrated into the banking system, the market capitalization of the cryptocurrency needs to be many, many times larger. It is necessary for there to be the possibility of institutional sums of billions of dollars or more in order for it to be successful. At this point, it is not even close to being as large. It is estimated to be somewhere around $30 billion. However, when I saw the whole market capitalization, I assumed, perhaps you are referring to the transaction instead, the value of the market for. There are 100 billion XRP and the value of the market is approximately 30 cents. Thus, it is approximately $30 billion. All right, I concur. In my opinion, the current users and the gradual but consistent expansion of the capital market surrounding XRP will be determined by the underlying demand for the cryptocurrency. VM and other similar programs are to fault for that. Additional businesses, such as VM, will begin to utilize XRP and other digital currencies as a means of funding their operations in the near future. Because of this, banks and other huge financial organizations will be put under a great deal of pressure to begin utilizing these as well, otherwise they will be in a lot of difficulty. It is unlikely that they will be able to stay up with VM and respond as quickly as they do. It is not required to cope with the expenses and delays that are associated with operating a bank. At this point in time, there is no reason to be concerned about the market. It is still very important to comprehend where we are and why we are here. Even though I am aware that some of you have already watched the video, the construction of Rome took a very long time. Those of us who are on the list of people who are rich in XRP, how many of us genuinely have XRP? This is such a little portion of the total population. Another thing that I find annoying is when individuals say things like, they're not going to let us get rich, why would they allow us to get wealthy? Do you agree that it is completely illogical? To illustrate my point, just take a look at all of the joke coin millionaires that are created every single day earning six or seven figures. I mean, I believe that they came up with various peculiar ways for people to make money rather than an asset that was backed by a real firm and not just a collection of people. Making an effort to discover who currently owns XRP. There is a complete chart list of individuals who own ranging from zero to over 500 million XRP and it is displayed down the left side of the document. There is no way that we will be able to determine who possesses more than 5 million XRP based on what I have done here. Less than 1000 XRP is held by 4.4 million accounts along the right side which is where the X line is located. Due to the fact that the current market value of that amount is less than $500, I am not even going to bother counting it. If you have less than $500 invested in XRP, I am going to assume that you do not believe in it. This is because XRP is a cryptocurrency. For a price of $500, I believe that everyone, if they are being truthful, is aware of how helpful XRP is. To put it another way, I believe that investing $500 in XRP is not sufficient nonetheless. This is just my perspective. On the other hand, there are individuals that possess anywhere from 1 million to 5 million XRP, and you would be shocked to learn how many individuals possess more than 1 million XRP, or even 3 or 4 million copies. Not persons, but accounts totaling 860,000 in all. In light of the fact that I 